What's going on people? Right, today we're going to be learning how to make this sick mixed media effect right here in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get right into it. So you want to uh, compound both your clips um, for this to work and then come to the transitions in uh, video transitions on DaVinci Resolve and find the pan left. Now the default settings are quite good, but let's make it a little bit better by coming to the inspector, uh, checking motion blur and upping the quality and messing around with the shutter angle. Once you've done that, you want to duplicate the clip on the right up. You then want to drag that clip to where the pan left transition ends, so where the white sort of bars end on the clip. And then just drag it one frame left, like so, and cut the right off, so we've got one frame. And this is essentially where our transition rolls in. Now navigate to the speed change and click on this little freeze icon. Um, and then we can drag uh, the top clip to where we want our transition to enter. So usually I just drag it um, the transition length, but it's totally up to you. Now let's go over to the color page and make a new node and add alpha output and just connect the blue square to the blue circle. Then let's go ahead and use our magic mask. Click on better for a uh, better selection. And let's just get a clean mask over our subject. So now press play on the magic mask uh, and let that track the whole clip as we want to get a clean track, come back to the edit panel and now you can really start to see it come into life. So let's go ahead and right click on render in place and come to DNHR uh, and make sure it's the 12 bit option and click render. Once it's rendered, go and type page curl in the effects. I'm just going to add that to that top clip. Um, we're going to have to do a bit of fiddling about because um, it folds in from a, a weird angle. So come to the transition and change the angle till it looks like it's folding in from the bottom. If you want to adjust the length, just pull the, the sort of the faint bar on top of the clip or you can head over to the video tab and the inspect on the top right and just adjust the frames. Now compound the clip um, and now we can really develop the mixed media sort of look. So come to the mixed media tool which you can find on bluetooth.com. Once that's applied we can now mess around with the settings in the inspector and, and let's really dial in the look we're going for. I didn't want the spray can effect kind of going on here. So I went over to the settings um, and I just brought down the, uh, the border edge so it's a lot more subtle. Now these settings looked good for now but we'll come back to these and really dial them in later. What you want to do now is make a cut at the end of the transition. You'll probably have to cut about two or three, four frames ahead and then drag the clip like I've done in the video. Um, it's a bit fiddly but this method seemed to work. Let's go ahead and compound the clip, uh, name it whatever you want, but something separate from the original, uh, open that in the timeline so we've got our new scene. So now this is where we're going to add all our textures and our scribbles. Um, first of all, I'm going to come and add this texture, make it the correct size. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up Fusion and I want to give it some movement. So let's add a transform node. Let's um, click on the center, modify with and add a perturb. And then we can come over to the modifier tab on the inspector and we can mess around with the strength and the wobble. We'll obviously add a stop motion effect later on so don't worry that it's smooth. We just want it to seem like each frame is um, from a different piece of paper. So come down, mess with the size, mess with the edges and change those to mirror so it doesn't look um, all weird. I usually keep the strength quite low, the speed quite low as well, and then put the wobble up. Um, and this seems to work best. For this part, you just want to add your scribble textures, mess around, different placements, different compositions. Um, anything really goes. Once you've done that, head over to our main timeline, um, and you can really start to see it come to life now. Let's add our mixed media tool to really glue everything together. The half-tone grungy textures just look incredible on this. Um, you have plenty of options to adjust, lots of different possibilities, and it just ties everything together in creating this mixed media look. From here I go and adjust the dot size, I just wanted something a little bit finer, and then I go and up the saturation. Remember to make your footage black and white beforehand if you want something similar. But this just looks really good, this sort of faded, old papery look, um, and it really ties everything together. I go and adjust the contrast as well, um, just to dial it in a little bit more, and we've got something looking really nice. I also adjust the blur size, just to take the sharpness out of it, ever so slightly. If you go full screen uh, whilst holding the dials, you can actually adjust the dials whilst in full screen, which is a quick little tip. Now let's head over to our effects and get an adjustment layer and just add that slightly on top. Um, I want to add like a flash 
um, with a bit of a blur just to blend everything together when our transition sort of ends. So head over to the bottom right and add a dynamic keyframe on the corrector one. You'll see on the node tree that that's labeled number one as well. So if you get confused, it's always labeled. You kind of want to find the point of transition. So just scroll across until we find that. And then we can kind of up the colors, up the shadows, up the highlights. And the whole idea is to add a little flash that when the transition ends, um, it blends together smoothly. After you've done that, go maybe two or three frames ahead, um, add another dynamic keyframe and reset everything. Now, if it doesn't line up perfectly, just highlight the keyframes and move it across. Now, I just want to add a, a touch of glow. So do all S um, and create a new node, uh, type in glow and let's attach that to the uh, node two. And then let's do exactly the same. You come down to corrector two, add a dynamic keyframe move two or three frames ahead uh, and just adjust the glow and you can fiddle about with this until you get this sort of nice flashing effect now the beauty of doing this on an adjustment clip is we can just readjust the alignment uh, as you can see I had to adjust it because it wasn't aligned perfectly so fiddle about until the end of the original transition cuts onto the next clip I also slightly dragged in the fade at the end of the adjustment clip just to smooth it over. I wanted a little bit of blur to complement this flash so I came and added an adjustment clip, just shortened the clip, uh, came to my open FX and added a directional blur. Once you've added that to the clip you can play around with the strength but the idea is that it's just very subtle and because the clip is so short it will just act uh, and blend with the flash so as you can see just because it's a couple of frames, you don't need to do any keyframing. So you can go into the effects as well and increase the strength, but I usually use the default and maybe just up the strength for just a touch. Now there's this new feature on the mixed media tool called Paper Draw and it's to distinguish the mixed media effect even further and really emulate the sort of the cutout style that you see um, in common mixed media techniques. So I've made three separate clips here, which I'm going to create three different shapes. Go to the fusion overlay, you can then come to the inspector, hit the generator button, and you can see we can manipulate the shapes here. It's so fluid, so dynamic, really easy to control, um, and lots of different settings. So the idea is to make each frame a different shape. So I go ahead and draw a square over his face here, and I notice that the effect is a little bit strong, so I come down and change the edge contrast. Move the edge position so it's the center of the shape. And this just looks incredible. This really adds to the aesthetic of that grungy sort of paper, mixed media style look. And that's pretty much it guys, it's quite a long tutorial with lots of different aspects and lots of different techniques that you probably learned along the way. But ultimately, this is a really simple way to create the mixed media style right here in DaVinci Resolve. So let's take a look at our final product. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve guys, check out the full collection of my editing plugins at bluetooth.com. These tools seriously level up your workflow. From CRT, VHS and animated titles, I've got you covered. Up your bags and we was up, we was up all night, right? All the functions set. When I turn my back, you froze, froze.